Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Also, check out our YouTube archive at youtube.greatdetectives.net. If you've not already, I do want to encourage you to pick up your Great Detectives of Old Time Radio t-shirt, t-shirt.greatdetectives.net. In addition to the regular premium tee, we also have women's slim fit tees as well as youth tees available and tank tops. Pick out your style and uh, get it today, t-shirt.greatdetectives.net. All right, well, now it's time for today's episode of Boston Blackie. The original air date is June the 18th, 1947, and this is the Donald Carver frame up. <laughs> Donald, what's the matter with your appetite? Nothing's the matter with my appetite, Mom. Ask me what's the matter with the stuff you've cooked. If you don't like what Mom cooked, don't eat it. Don't make any remarks about it either. Why don't you shut up? Donald, don't talk that way to your brother. Kenneth isn't making any trouble. He isn't making it any pleasant around here either. Maybe you'd better leave the table, Donald. I might as well. <laughs> don't let him upset you, Ma. He's just in one of his moods this morning. He's always in one of his moods. Ah... Uh... I don't know why I put up with you two. You don't know why you put up with us. Well, I like that. I don't know how we put up with you. You refuse to work. You won't help me around the house. You won't do a thing ever. You let your brother support you and me wait on you. It's a good setup, isn't it, Mother? Or do you want me to move out and do things my way? Maybe that wouldn't be as bad as I've always imagined. Maybe I ought to let you. (laughs) You won't. You'll do anything to keep me out of trouble. By the way, I need $10 for this afternoon. I won't give it to you. All right, then. I'll better give it to him, Ma. Just go out and try and steal it if you don't. Thanks, brother. Sometimes you're almost a good guy. You ought to be ashamed to take money from me, Donald. It's Kenneth's money. He works for it, and all you do is spend it. That's the way it's supposed to be. He makes it, I spend it. Where's the $10, Ma? I'll get it for you. But believe me, this is going to stop one of these days. When it stops, I'll start. That's simple, isn't it? Keep me happy, I keep out of trouble. I ought to let you go. You'll end up in just one place, the electric chair, and maybe that's a good idea. And now, on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. <laughs> I'm leaving now, Mr. Williams. Is there anything you want me to do? Uh, No, Kenneth. I think you've seen enough of the office for today. (laughs) Uh, You put everything in the safe, didn't you? Uh, Yes, sir. Well, then, I guess that's all. I guess that's all, Kenneth. See you in the morning. Good night. Good night. Night, Miss Holloway. Oh, good night, Kenneth. There's a fine boy, Miss Holloway. Hard worker. He'll go places someday. Mm, He's all right, but have you ever met his brother? Once. That was enough. Mm. How two brothers can be so different. It stopped raining, hasn't it? Yes, it stopped about a half hour ago. That's good. I hate to go home in the rain. Well, we might as well call it a day ourselves, Miss Holloway. Say, what's Kenneth using for a head this afternoon? He didn't put everything in the safe. Look at those ledgers on the table. Why, that's funny. (laughs) Kenneth never forgets those ledgers. Well, he's entitled to slip up once, Miss Holloway. (laughs) I'll put them away. Would you hand them to me? Yes, yes, of course. Thank you. Say... Kenneth really must have something on his mind. He left this office supply tray out of the cabinet. Well, I'll put it back. Uh, never mind. I'll oh, do I've it. got it. Oh, oh, Mr. Williams, I'm oh, so sorry. Oh, my fault. Always let a woman have her way, I always say. Guess I should have let you carry it. Oh, well, I'll pick up the stuff that's spilled. Oh, don't bother, Miss Holloway. Nothing but paper clips, thumbtacks, a couple of pencils, even for the cleaning woman. And for Pete's sake, don't look so conscience-stricken. Oh, it wasn't dear. your fault. Well, all right, I won't look like that anymore, but I better write a note for the woman who cleans telling her that... Uh, come in. Oh, Miss 
Mr. Williams, he has a gun. Good heavens, man, no. Don't be a fool. <laughs> Yeah, who was it? It's your mother, Donald. I want to clean up your room. Okay, come on in, clean it. Who's stopping you? Why didn't you do it today while I was out? I'd like to be alone in the evening. I like to spend my evenings doing something besides housework, too, Donald, but there's too much to do around here. Not for me, there isn't. But I like it that way. Oh, Donald, your dress is a mess. Can't you ever put anything away? Why should I? It's too much bother. Everything's too much bother to you, isn't it? Did you go to see Harry Brown as you promised? Uh, I saw the bum this afternoon. I went way across town to see him. All he wanted was to give me a job at his gas station. A job wouldn't hurt you, Donald, and Mr. Brown's company pays well. So what? You didn't take the job, did you? <laughs> Are you kidding, Ma? Oh, Donald, you're impossible. Look at these dresser drawers. No wonder your clothes are always in such a mess. Suppose one is worse than the other. Hey, 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 keep out of that drawer, Mother. I'm going to clean this room of yours inside. <sighs> I told you to stay out of there. Donald, where did you get all this money? Money? There's no money in that drawer. There's no... Wow. Hey, the... hey, that must be $25,000. You didn't know it was in here, did you? Well, no, Ma, no. I, uh, I took a shirt at Cairns. I didn't want you to see it. A gun. There's a gun in here. So you have a gun, too. Ma, that money isn't mine. That gun isn't the mine. The money isn't yours because you stole it. But the gun is, and you got this money by using it. It's been fired recently. I can tell by the smell of it. Put up your hands, Donald. Put that gun away, Mom. Warning you. I'm warning you, Donald Carver. You do as I say, or when the police get here, they'll have to take you to the morgue. Hello. Hello, Blackie. This is Mary. Oh, hello, Mary. You sound excited. What's the matter? Well, did you hear what was on the radio a minute ago? No, I didn't. Mine isn't on. Well, Inspector Faraday just solved a robbery and a murder in one hour and 30 minutes. And guess who was arrested? Who? <laughs> Donald Carver. Donald Carver? Who's he? Oh, Blackie, don't you remember the woman who came to see you about a year ago? The woman with the son who needed a talking to? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> My talking to him didn't take, huh? <laughs> well took for a year and then wore off. Apparently, there was a robbery and murder early this evening, and Carver's mother found some of the stolen money and the murder gun in her son's dresser drawer and phoned the police. His own mother turned him in, huh? Mm-hmm. Gee, must have been a pretty tough thing for her to do. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. I just remembered something else about Mrs. Carver. Huh? She said if I didn't straighten Donald out, she'd do something drastic to get rid of him. Yes, yes, that's right, she did. Mary, it's not like a killer to keep a murder gun in his dresser drawer. It can be found too easily. Well, this whole case was over in 90 minutes. I think the case has just begun, Mary. Who was killed and where? Uh, a man named Williams and his secretary, Miss Holloway. It happened in Mr. Williams' office where Donald's brother Kenneth works. Uh, that's 18 Oval Square. 18 Oval Square, huh? Uh-huh. Well, I'm going to Oval Square right now. And I'll bet before long I have Faraday running around in circles. While strolling through the park one day in the mirror. Very nice voice you have there. Back up there, young fellow. You'll get your feet wet. When I scrub floors, I scrub them and everything on them. In the merry, merry month of... Uh, I'm sorry to bother you while you're working, but I'm Boston Blackie. A murder was committed in this room this evening, I understand. Mighty good understanding you've got. Month of May, I... Uh, how long has it been since the police left? Oh, about an hour. Take a look around. You ever see such a mess? There must have been some fight here before the killings. Taken by surprise uh, by... Apparently, uh, was that stuff on the floor there when you came in? Yep, pair of roguish eyes. Paper clips uh, and thumbtacks and papers and all? Yep. Cops figured out they got knocked on the floor during the struggle. What's it to you? I don't know yet. Well, thanks for letting me interrupt your work. I'll be seeing you in the merry, merry month of May. <laughs> Blackie, 
Are you sure this is Mrs. Tarver's house? I'm positive. Well, let's go in. All right. I'm with you. Careful, Mary. It's muddy. Oh, oh. It was an awful rain this afternoon. We had an awful mess of the walk to Mrs. Carver's house. I'll say. You can tell a lot of people have been here. <laughs> a lot of policemen, I know that. <laughs> I'll bet that's Faraday's print right there, the big flat one. <laughs> <laughs> that one there is probably Mrs. Carver's. And Mary, huh? look at those prints going around to the side of the house, the path that leads to the kitchen. Oh, yeah. There's an unusual design in one of the heels. See? A round indentation in the mud. Yeah, yeah, I see it. But I haven't been interested in mud since I stopped making mud pies. Come on, let's go in and see Mrs. Carver. Well, that is what we came down here to do, isn't it? You go out there. What? Get away from here. Well, wherever Blackie goes, there's trouble. I said get out of here. Blackie, he's holding a shotgun. I know, and he's holding us up from going in, too. Hey, look, you, uh, we want to see Mrs. Carver. You heard me say to get off these premises, didn't you? Well, get in fast. Mom isn't seeing anybody. Now, get out of here before I count three or I'll... What's the trouble? That's okay, Put down Ma. that gun. Who is it out there? It's me, Mrs. Carver, Boston Blackie, and my friend, Miss Wesley. Oh, Blackie, come in. Please come in. Kenneth didn't know you. Well, Mom says to come in. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Never saw such a contradictory young man. Angry because we came here, and now he's angry because we won't come in. I don't care how angry he got as long as that shotgun kept cool. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Carver. Hello. Hope you don't mind a couple of visitors. Come in, Blackie. You too, Miss Wesley. Kenneth, put away that shotgun. Okay, Mom. Sorry about the gun, Blackie. Didn't know it was you. I guess you're here because of my brother. Yes, we are. Uh, Mrs. Carver, it must have been very difficult for you to turn in your own son. It was, Blackie. But not so difficult to find some of the stolen money in the murder gun, huh? It was in his dresser drawer. I was cleaning. That late in the evening? I had a lot of washing to do during the day. You know, Mrs. Carver, I remember a remark you made about a year ago concerning Donald and his antics. You said you might not be able to stand them or him much longer. Are you hinting that Ma killed those people and is trying to blame Donald? Well, well not to blow. Blow. You mean you ought to try? Why, I'll... Blackie, be... please, now, don't hit him. Whether or not he gets hit is up to him, Mary. Get out of here, Blackie. Get out before I throw you no, out. Blackie, please, now, let's not have any trouble. Please, Blackie. Wait a minute. Uh, what time did you come home tonight, Kenneth? At a quarter to six. At exactly a quarter to six? Yes. I left the office at 5.30, and when I leave then, I'm always home by a quarter to six. How do you know it was exactly a quarter of six? I looked at the clock just as I came in. That's one way of telling, isn't it? Yes, I suppose so. If the clock was right. Where is it? I want to check the clock. In the kitchen, right above the stove, Blackie. Mm -hmm. I use it to tell how long a roast has been cooking. You know, you've got to cook a roast. Wait a minute, Ma, please. All right. Blackie, a little while ago, I told you to get out of here. What are you waiting for? Nothing now, Kenneth. I just want to know all the facts, that's all. Well, good night. Night. Mary. Mary, where are you? I'm out here waiting for you, Blackie. Oh. Well, seems to me the murder case is pretty much solved. Faraday has arrested Donald Carver, and you've found nothing to indicate that Donald didn't kill Kenneth's boss and the secretary. You know, Mary, I like to agree with you. It makes things so much easier for the two of us. <laughs> Only you've never been so completely wrong in all your life. <laughs> And now, back to Boston Blackie. Mrs. Martha Carver has two sons, Donald and Kenneth. Son Donald is a ne'er-do-well whose demand for money keeps the family broke. Shortly after son Kenneth leaves his office, his boss and boss's secretary are both shot and killed by a man who then robs the safe. Part of the stolen money is then found by Mrs. Carver in her son Donald's dresser. A recently used pistol is found there, too. So Donald is arrested. Boston Blackie, however, feels that Donald has been framed, but he can't prove it. As we return to our story, Blackie is in Inspector Faraday's office seeking further facts. Blackie, you have no more right in this case than I do in the Ladies' Aid Society. You have no right in this case either, Faraday. No right answers. Oh, I suppose you do. Well, so far, I'm only guessing at things, but I've had pretty good luck with my guesses. When were Williams and the secretary killed? None of your business. 5.30. Well, at 5.30, where was Donald Carver? He says he was with a man named Harry Brown. Had he checked? Sure, but Brown left town at 6.30. Well, we should try. I didn't have to. 
The gun found in Donald's dresser was the murder gun. So what? The money found in his dresser was part of the money stolen from the Williams Company safe. Where's the rest of it? How do I know? Maybe he spent it. Donald Carver has a bad reputation. And you're going to have a worse one if you don't let him go. I've already let him go. What? I had to, in spite of the evidence against him. Harry Brown called in from out of town, and he swears that Donald Carver was with him from five to six. And Brown's office is 50 blocks from where the murder took place. Well, with Donald Carver free, who are you going to get to take his place? No one. I still think Donald Carver is guilty. With a perfect alibi? I'm going to prove his alibi isn't so perfect. Don't bet. I could tell you where you'll find your killer, though. He could tell me, he says. All right, tell me. Well, if I were you, I'd invite me to go back to the Carver house. I think it would be a good idea if we had a good talk with Mrs. Carver. <laughs> What are you sitting there looking at me for? The police let me go. They think I'm innocent. Is my own brother going to convict me? Why don't you get out of here, Donald? Want to try to make me? Yeah. You know, kid, I have an idea I was framed. And I got a very good idea who did it, too. Maybe you and Mom did this thing together. You never were much good, Donald. But just how low can you get? I ought to knock every... try, Mama's boy. Scared? Not of you. And this will prove it, too. So you do have a little blood in you, huh, kid? Well, I'm going to see just how much and what color it is. That's what you think. That's what I was waiting for. Right, right. I all right, Are you all right, Kenneth? Yeah, Blackie, I'll live. But get that guy out of here or he won't. I'll take care of your brother. Let go of me, Faraday. I'll let you all have it. Let go. Let him go, Faraday. Okay. I've owed him a workout for a year. Where's your mother, tough guy? Who knows? Where is she, Kenneth? I don't know. She left here right after you and Miss Wesley did. I don't know when she's coming back or where she went. I think maybe you had the right idea about talking to Mrs. Carver, Blackie. I've got another idea, only this one is a question. Kenneth, I went up to your office after the murders. The cleaning woman showed me a lot of office supplies... Uh, Thumbtacks, paper clips, pencils, the usual stuff. Only they were on the floor. Well, what am I expected to know about that? Oh, I thought maybe it was spilled during the day, an accident or something, was it? Not while I was there. Uh, Blanky, I don't know what you're trying to prove. All I know is you haven't done it. Now, let's get out of here. I'm going to send out an alarm for Mrs. Carver. When we pick her up, this case will be over. From the very beginning, this case has been over, Faraday. Over your head. <laughs> Stand right where you are, Blackie. What? Well, Mrs. Carver, and the gun. What are you doing in my apartment? You're looking for trouble, Blackie. It looks like I found it. Why the gun, Mrs. Carver? I don't want to hurt you, Blackie. But if you don't stay away from my boys and me, I'll kill you. I don't know who killed those people, but I don't want you to find out. Mrs. Carver, be smart and put down that gun. Why should I? Because I think you trust me. After you put down the gun, you're going to do one other thing. What is that? Call your sons, both of them. They're at home. And you're going to tell them to meet you in Inspector Faraday's office. Am I? Yes. And do you know what you're going to do in Faraday's office? What? You're going to confess that you robbed and murdered Williams and his secretary and tried to blame it on your son Donald. Don't be funny, Blackie. Mrs. Carver, your guilty son has succeeded in outsmarting the police so far. But... You really want him caught. I know that. And I promise you, I'll prove a case against him. So, won't you help me do it quickly and get it over with? I shot and killed Mr. Williams and his secretary, Miss Holloway, and robbed the safe. Then I put part of the uh, money... A little in... more slowly, Mrs. Carver. This is being typed as you talk. I'm sorry. Are you even with her, Casey? Um, uh, yes, Rick Faraday. All right, Mrs. Carver, go on. Mother, why did you let them talk you into this? You know you're not telling the truth. I know what I'm doing, Kenneth. And now I know what you tried to do to me. I'm sorry, Donald. Go on, Mrs. Carver. I know this isn't pleasant for you, so let's get it over with. Uh, finish your statement, Mrs. Carver. Never mind, Blackie. All right. Then I put the money and the gun I used in my son Donald's dresser drawer. 
I did this so he would be sent to the electric chair and my son Kenneth and I could live in peace again. Donald made our lives miserable. I think that's all I care to say just now. I think you've said enough too, Mrs. Carver. Let's have it, Casey. Here you are, Inspector. Now you'll just sign this, Mrs. Carver, and we'll let you rest. Thank you. Where do I sign? Uh, There, just after the word signed. Blackie, you and Casey uh, sign as witnesses, will you? Yes. With pleasure, Faraday. No, 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 you can't do it. Now, wait a minute, Mom. Don't sign that. I won't let you. I'll admit it. I did it. No, no, darling. Don't try. Just protect me. No, 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 Mom. Not protect you. I'm just telling the truth. Wait a minute. What is this? This is what I've been waiting for, Faraday. Donald, I was hoping you'd confess. You just couldn't see your mother go to the electric chair, could you? No, not for something she didn't do. Let her go, Faraday. I'm the guy you want. Ma, tell me the truth. Tell me you're lying. I'm sorry, Donald, but my confession stands. No, it doesn't. It's a lie. I know you hate me and I don't blame you, but you're not going to jail for something I did. I killed those two people. I'll take over from here, Mrs. Carver. <laughs> Faraday, on my way back down here, I stopped and bought a large box of thumbtacks. Mind if I spill them on the floor? Blanky, this is no time for fooling around. You've messed things up enough. What's the idea of the tax? Well, pardon the pun, but it may tax your mentality to get the idea. Now... But if some people can sleep on a bed of nails and prove something, I can walk across the floor of tax and prove something. Now, uh, I want you to watch this, will you? What are you trying to do, Blanky? Trying to pick up a tack and pick out a killer. Oh, stop wasting my time. Mrs. Carver just confessed to the crime. Now Donald Carver has confessed. I thought you had this whole thing figured out. I do, Faraday. And I did when I came in. Uh, now, look at the bottom of my shoe. <laughs> there, what do you see? Some tax. So what? Now look at the bottom of Kenneth Carver's shoes, and you'll see, so what? I you nuts. He didn't walk across these tacks. No, but there were tacks on the floor of the Williams office, weren't there? Yeah, but what is that? Uh, let's see one of your shoes, Carver. What for? Just let's see one of them. Okay, okay. Hey, yeah. And there you are, Faraday, a large-headed thumbtack. Look closely, and you'll find it's the same kind you found on the floor of the murder room. A guy can pick up a thumbtack anywhere. Not the kind you have in the heel of that shoe of yours, Kenneth. And I have further proof you murdered your boss and tried to pin the crime on your brother Donald. Why, you don't have any proof. If he didn't do it, Ma did. She wanted him sent to the chair. If she did, she picked a very poor time to frame him. Your mother knew your brother had an appointment with Harry Brown, 50 blocks from your office. Mrs. Carver, you knew your son Donald was nowhere near the Williams office, didn't you? Yes. But you didn't know it, did you, Kenneth? So I didn't know it. So what? What does that prove? Any more than the fact that I have a thumbtack in the heel of my shoe. That proves plenty, that thumbtack, believe me. Kenneth, you didn't leave the building the night of the murders. You came back, shot your boss and his secretary, and stepped on one of the thumbtacks that were on the floor. How they got there, I don't know. Maybe there was a fight, or they were dropped accidentally. Wait a minute, Blackie. Don't get me all mixed up. Suppose this Kenneth guy picked up the thumbtack on the street, any place at all. Just because it's in his heel doesn't mean he was in the office. Oh, but it does. You see, it had been raining when he got home, and Kenneth, good son that he is, wouldn't go in the front door and muddy up the living room. He went in through the kitchen. Remember, Mrs. Carver? He told me he looked at the clock, and you told me it was in the kitchen. He did come in through the kitchen that evening. Uh Uh-huh, sure. And the footprints leading to the kitchen had a small, round indentation in the heel. I noticed it when I came to the house with Mary. I could have accused Kenneth then, but I wanted the whole story first. Now I know he kept most of the money and put the rest of the money and the gun in Donald's dresser. He tried to frame me, did he? I'll tear that guy up. Don't bother, Donald. I've already done that to his alibi. Faraday will take it from there. Buddy, you better pull your shoes back, young fella. You'll get them soaked. Well, I didn't want to interrupt your song by telling you I was here. I heard you come in and knew who you were without having to look at your face. I can tell by your shoes. You're the young fella, Boston Blackie, who came around asking questions the night of the murder. Coming well, through the right. Well, I'm the same person, all right. I came back to thank you for your help. Help? Oh, I didn't do nothing to help. If a buddy kiss a buddy... You did quite some helping, though. You practically made that brother Kenneth confess. I was reading about it in the papers. Well, it was the supposed-to-be bad brother Donald that set up the whole thing, you know. Should a buddy cry, every lassie has her let... Say, one thing I never understood. 
Why did that woman, Mrs. Carver, come to your place with a gun? Well, she came there because she knew it was Kenneth that did the killing. And she didn't want me to try to prove it. When I told her I could prove it, with or without her help, she agreed to my plan. She found Kenneth wasn't such a good son when he was willing to stand by and see her confess. Mm, She sure did. None they have, say I. Say, what happened to Donald? Well, he got a job in a gas station, and according to Mrs. Carver, he kind of likes the idea of honest work. Never hurt nobody. And all the lads, they smile at me when a coming through the ride. This is Andrew J. Graham, author of the Web Surfer series. Oh, and a madam's wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Welcome back. Well, I guess they did the best they could to make it uh, a little less obvious that the uh, quote unquote good brother did it, but. I, I think that once you accepted that the uh, bad brother didn't do it, I think that would be way too obvious a setup uh, as a general rule. Uh, and I think the idea that the mom committed a double murder just to get rid of her no-account son wasn't really a credible idea. So, yeah, as much as they danced around it, we're really left with one choice. Uh, though I do wonder why he bothered uh, with the uh, facade of uh, leaving other than just to set things up for the mystery. And had he not left, uh, he may have avoided stepping in the tax, which was the crucial clue. 
All right, well, uh, listener comments and feedback now, and this one comes regarding the video theater episodes of Boston Blackie with Kent Taylor. Bert writes on Facebook, Chester Morris is the only real Boston Blackie for me. Well, thanks so much for the comment, Robert, and I doubt you're alone in that sentiment. All right, well, that will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and next Thursday, another episode of Boston Blackie. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.